Thank you again for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about how you became involved in directing the film and how you maybe received the script or what you really liked about the film that convinced you to direct it. Um, it was obviously one of those very interesting propositions. Hey, do you want to make a Kurosawa, remake a Kurosawa film with Kazuo Shiguru writing the screenplay and Paul Knight? You know, is attached to 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 play the lead. Uh, it felt like a very natural thing to say yes to, um, and and so I did. Uh, and then I had to spend a couple of months just building up my confidence to make sure that I was the right person to do the job. And was the script fully developed when you signed on, or what was that experience like of maybe adding elements to the story and um, as you began directing? It's very natural that when you bring the director on, you know, there's the opportunity for the director to kind of sink their teeth into the screenplay and to work with the writer to make it your own in some way as the director. There was a wonderful uh, almost nine months of that for me with Ishiguro where he, you know, opened the floodgates and let me kind of just tear apart and rebuild and change things and add things and try things out and put them back. And he had endless patience for my, for my want of constant irrigation um and so it was one of those really rewarding creative uh, collaborations where i feel that he he made me feel very confident that the script that we had when we started shooting was the one that we wanted and once you began production on the film on set what was your just overall directing um, ex um approach to the film and really making the film and what was that experience like for you once production began on set uh, I mean, I did this film the way I'd done all my previous films, loads of preparation. I'm a planner. I like to plan. I'm quite controlling, which I think most directors are. Um, and I had this wonderful team of people who I think are also planners. Uh, I was working with an extraordinary costume designer, and production designer, and you know, hair and makeup designer. Uh, and we had this wonderful workforce of actors Um and I would say that my process is to create an environment. I like to create an environment where everyone feels that they are safe and they are able to create and that there is, there is a real real celebration of, of their creativity. I like actors to feel like they, they, can, they can make any choice and they can try anything out and that there's a real kind of uh, purity to all of that. And also speaking about the actors, I also wanted to ask about casting the film, um, especially for Bill and him playing the lead role. And what was that experience like of bringing him and the supporting cast as well? Um, so Bill was part of the package. You know, it was it was a pack was the offer of working with him on this, um, and he's he was just incredibly gracious, just like Ishiguro, also willing and able to take me on and and you know, listen and, and respond to my demands about uh, interrogating over here and interrogating over there and working the character out. And I think that what was really re relieving to me was that when I got to know Bull better as we prepared for this film was that he's also a planner. And so that made it good because we both kind of just loved planning it together and, and spending time together. And, and I, it could have gone the other way. You know, he could have been the kind of actor who was just like, I'll see you on the first day of shooting, you know, don't call me. Uh, but but he wasn't. He was the kind of person who just also wanted to to collaborate with the director and, and get to know one another. So that was really helpful to me. Also, speaking about that collaboration, I was also about to ask about if you maybe had any rehearsal time or time to speak with the cast, um, just in general about really developing their characters as well. I I like to write backstories for the characters that I give to the actors. I like to go really deep about that. I you know I invent absolutely everything. I like to invent childhood traumas and first memories of school day or whatever. I like to give them tangible memories for the actors to really use as roadmaps to their choices in the script. Uh, I don't really do rehearsals because I don't like to deaden it. I sometimes will have scenes written that are not in the script that allows us to rehearse if we have to do that but I choose the environments that I think are necessary for example with living because the people in the office the team in the office there's meant to be this understanding that they've all been sitting at that desk for a while a couple of months if not years and so it felt natural that I brought those actors in and they all met you know in a, in a mock-up set and they all worked out. I told them where they were all going to be sitting and what their positions were, and so that when they came to the first day of shooting the film, they had a you know a sensory memory of 
being at their desk together. Um, so that was helpful, but it didn't really qualify as a rehearsal. It was more kind of like a, a sort of block rehearsal just to make sure everyone knew what the environment was going to look like. Also, um, speaking about some of the technical elements of the film, like you mentioned earlier, and um, I also wanted to ask them personally about um, the production design and the locations and what that experience like um, with the film being set in the 50s and really creating the look, the looks for the sets. It's fun. It was, you know, the joy of being an outsider, to pick, to pick and choosing what I liked about London, what I liked about London in the 50s, choosing a wacky color palette of black, uh, doing things that... Uh, you know, just allowed me to be, you know, a foreigner, ultimately uh, designing a film with the extraordinary designer, Helen Scott, where we where we had a very controlled palette and we then extended that palette into the costume. Um, and I think that that was a real, a real pleasure for me was working with such extraordinary creative collaborators like Helen and Sandy, who who just elevate, you know, they they take what you give them and they just make it so much more than you imagine it's going to be. Also with the costume design as well, um, what was that experience like also really creating the way the characters look on screen? Uh, we had one of the most extraordinary casting directors, Callian Crawford, who was probably the person that I worked with for the longest on living. She and I spent probably nearly 18 months or two years putting this movie together. Um, and she taught me a whole bunch. She, she, she introduced me to these wonderful actors and she, she really encouraged, I think, a lot of the right people. Um, and she got we really got into this world together and it's a real it's you know 90 percent of my job is casting if i get the casting right then by the time i get to shooting it should all just flow and, and then i can't take full credit for that i think the the work that Kalina has done is is a massive part of why the film i think works as a as an ensemble and also what was the process like of working with the film's costume to the designer to really create the look for the characters as well um uh, Sandy is the kind of designer where you say one thing and from that one thing she'll be able to interpret about 50 million things. Um, and so it was, it, was a, it was often like a two-word kind of conversation with Sandy where I'd just be like, I would say to her, um, dull and gray. And from that she will invent somebody's entire wardrobe. Uh, and it was, it, was a, it was a sort of wonder for me to see somebody of that caliber at work, I think one of the biggest things for me about working with Sandy Powell was I was so curious to see how Sandy was going to work, and it, you know, it, it just turns out that again, she's a planner. She just she just plans and thinks and plans, and it lives inside of her head. And she wakes up in the middle of the night and she makes notes and she calls you and she talks to you, and uh, it's just a consummate, consummate craftswoman. Also, what was the experience like also getting to work with your cinematographer to really figure out how you wanted to visually shoot the film as well? Well, this was a very shorthand relationship because we've worked together before. So again, actually a lot of very few words um, and a lot of time spent together, real bonding. Um, and we pour over the same images. We we absorb everything and then we kind of lock it off and go, okay, that's the, that's the look of the film and we're going to keep it to that. And we kind of keep each other in check. Um, and then from that point on, we also just expand and grow and create. Uh, it's a, the, at its best when you're shooting a film, it's this experience where every day you feel like you're creating more and more and more and you, and you're, you're expanding on your creative ideas. Uh, that's when it really works. That's when it flows. When, when you feel like you're, there's like a boundlessness to, to your ideas. Also there with the film coming out um, and being released by Sony Pictures Classics, um, what was that experience like of also securing that distribution with them as well? Uh, well, as I've been saying to Michael Barker, who runs Sony Pictures Classics, it's, it's, a, it's a real achievement for me because I used to see their logo on the movies that I used to watch in South Africa when I was a kid. I, used to, you know, I recognized this blue, big blue screen with the white font as a symbol of, of, of art, as a symbol of, of auteur filmmaking uh and it's kind of it's sort of imprinted and i'm so glad that they still have that logo because now that it's the front of a film that i've directed i sort of feel a completion um and it's you know, only when our trailer our american trailer came out and my parents saw it for the first time did my mother actually clock perhaps the sort of scale of this in a way or the sort of like the sort of the, the wonder i guess from from my family's point of view about my career and where where i'm headed um and it all comes down to the fact that it was Sony Pictures Classics. 
Well, I think that was um, mainly it, but thank you again for taking the time out to speak with me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a good day. Thanks, you too.